everybody today we're gonna do book reviews and there is a lot to unpack with these two books that we read for the month of April the first is where'd you go Bernadette so let me just read you the this is the synopsis when 15 year old B claims a family trip to Antarctica as a reward for perfect grades her fiercely intelligent but agoraphobic mother Bernadette throws herself into preparations for the trip. Worn down by years of trying to live the Seattle life she never wanted, Bernadette is on the brink of a meltdown. I'm gonna stop there. Okay, so I read this book during the month of April and um, all of us in different parts of the world and the country um, in North America all got hit with the COVID news at different times. And each of us has their own personal story of day one. For me, day one was March 10th. I came home and a few of the neighbors were upset because school was closed, because the child that goes to our high school, their parent um, tested positive. So there was a lot of anxiety in the neighborhood. Mentally though, in the back of my mind, it was there on February 24th, simply because um, an incident happened on my husband's airplane upon landing. Um, I don't wanna go into many too, into details about that. This book I read in April. So May 10th is when my COVID story started. Um, and so t things didn't really sink in till April. So, um, you know, that's when all our stories started. So that's when all of us got the stay at home order. And I was reading this as most parents uh, were settling into the reality that they have to um, take care of their children, work, cook, clean, do errands in the strangest way possible all during a pandemic and also take care of their children's education because school is now closed not just in my city where I live because of the incident of the child um, and the parent testing positive but um, the whole I think the whole state's closed this book made me anxious now um, I'm kid free and I'm quite open about it it is a choice I made and I'm very happy and I think this book showed me that some people don't, a lot of people, don't really go into parenting knowing exactly what the job description entails. And um, I feel like this is one of those people. So Bernadette is a very talented artist who lived in uh, Los Angeles and she was an architect. And that's all I'm going to say about that. This book stressed me out because I just constantly was aware of how she's like me and what would I be like if I was a parent. Like you have to deal, if you're an introvert, you have to deal with other children because your child goes to school and other parents because the children's parents have uh, all these responsibilities. And now you're roped into all these various committees and a lot of parents see themselves as advocates for their children. And this book stressed me out. And I'm glad it did because the funny parts were five times more funny because when you're that anxious and you're reading about this and you're like, oh my God, I cannot imagine what it's like to be this woman and something funny happens, I was alone and I burst out laughing in several parts. So I was the book amazing? I think so. I thought it was pretty good. Was the movie amazing? No. <laughs> Don't waste your money. We actually bought <laughs> the movie on Amazon and I made my husband watch it. I think he lasted maybe 10 minutes. And then I made my parents watch it and they lasted maybe 40 minutes. Um, the movie wasn't amazing, even though the actors were really good. Kate uh, Blanchett is in it. She's such a great actress, I love her. Um, so book was great, movie, eh, not really. Uh, and the reason why I say the book was great is because it made me so anxious. And um, yeah, I like that book. Next up we have A Man Called Ovi. 
What a lovely book. Oh my goodness. Not just because I'm grumpy right now, uh, and so is Obi, um, but it, what a great book. It made me laugh. Like, um, he takes in a, a youth who has been kicked out of his house, and he's always referring to what his wife would like, and he's grumbling. He's like, what do you think this is, a hotel? And he says, Sonia would like this because she likes hotels. This book is um, also on Amazon, and if you want to watch it, it's two hours, So, um, and it's in Swedish. So when I said to my husband, listen, let's hurry up and eat dinner early and get our chores done because we're going to have a nice romantic movie night, he was all excited. And I said, the movie is Swedish with subtitles, and he was like, oh, God. It was funny. Anyway, he sat through the whole movie. He was like emotionally involved. He's like, no, that's going to happen now. Movie was great. Book was great. I'm wondering how this book came to be in English because it's written by a Swedish author, Frederick Bachman, and the humor translates. A lot of times when people write in a different language, the humor doesn't. In this book, it does. And it's really good. And it almost makes me want to get a cat. Almost, but not yet. All right, next we have An Extraordinary Life, Susan Phillips Berry. I was given this book also by Jan. These four books are from my friend Jan because I can't go to the library anymore. Uh, let me read this one paragraph. Susan Phillips Berry was a child actor with Boston Children's Theater. She moved on to a diverse and interesting career as a teacher, manufacturer's representative, non-for-profit executive, business consultant, speaker, and writer. Then on Tuesday, I'm kidding. Um, I'm joking. This one, uh, I'm obviously running out of books to read because uh, this one was, I think I've had this book for a year. Uh, Jan, I promise to return this to you at the end of the month. But you can tell I'm running out of books to read because one of the things that's hard to stomach is narcissism right now. And I'm like, really? That's just the first paragraph. And I bet you she accomplished all of that before the age of 30. So right now when some of us are like, I put on pants today that had a zipper. It's hard to read about someone who accomplished everything under the sun um, right now. Tell me if I'm wrong. Read this and tell me if I'm wrong. But um, that's what we're going to read for May. Okay. And then uh, what else do we have? This one I'm kind of excited about. This one is the Arsenal of Democracy by A.J. Blaine. FDR, Detroit, and an epic quest to arm an America at war. So one of the things that uh, you might have heard of is, I think, enacting the Defense Act. It's where we're retooling um, various car companies to make uh, masks and ventilators. We may not feel like it, but we are at war, and we are at war with something invisible. Uh, I still haven't been tested. I don't have any symptoms, so obviously I'm going to wait my turn because people who are really sick and who are um, in need of the test get priority, not me. My only priority is will I see my parents this summer because there's no way I'm exposing them to this um, until I'm tested. I could be asymptomatic. We don't know. So when I heard about how these car manufacturers are retooling for ventilators, uh, I was just happy that this book was sitting in my coffee table for a year. So I'm excited to read about that because I think one of the things that's hard for us right now in the situation we're in is we're only progressing as fast as our slowest least compliant group. And I hinted at this before. I predict we're getting a second wave simply because geography, um, one of the factors is snowbirds. They're gonna be returning from Florida to Michigan, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. So all these states, we will see a second wave because Certain states were slower to enact the stay-at-home policy. And for a lot of us, especially in healthcare, we're hoping to get that break. 
All of our vacations have been canceled. A lot of us have been laid off. A lot of us have been furloughed. We know of anesthesiologists that have been laid off because no one's doing elective surgery. So when I think about what we're going through right now, I my anger and anxiety comes from, you know, the, all they're asking for is just stay home. That's it. That's it. And meanwhile, my grandfather fought in World War II, and some of us are the product of Holocaust survivors. And um, I uh, saw uh, an episode of Asian Boss where they interviewed a woman who is still awaiting resolution from Prime Minister Shinzo Abe from Japan about Japanese comfort women. And I just look at previous generations as incredible role models and I wish things today were different and maybe reading this book would make me sort of be a little bit more compassionate because maybe in World War II they felt the same way that I'm feeling right now is our progress is really based on the slowest to adapt to change. Uh, I'm curious how that happened. So uh, one, if you like history, I think you'll write like this book. And the second is, um, we're repeating it again. We have to redesign and uh, adapt to a changing world. Uh, I'll just read you uh, quickly. The arsenal of democracy is captivating history told as its most intimate level of detail. At the same time, Bame's scope is grand and humane even when he is bringing to life the most inhumane of people or moments an engrossing, highly researched page turner. So I'm pretty excited about this. So let me know what you think of the books. Um, Where'd you go for Bernadette and A Man Called Ovi? And for me, we're going to be reading The Arsenal of Democracy and An Extraordinary Life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Please remember to like and subscribe. Bye for now.